Welcome to Cooking the Casbah. My name is Sabi. I take you on a culinary journey of the Mediterranean and the world. Today we're hanging out with moms. Special. This is my mother. We're going to go visit with her in her kitchen where I learned most of the things I know how to make and share with you some of her recipes that she passed on to me. So please stay tuned. Hi, I am Chef Sabi. I've been a Madison restaurateur for 20 years. Join me as I cook my way around the world and visit with Madison area chefs to explore their culinary creations. Come with me on an epic journey of culinary adventures, right here on Cooking the Casbah. We're back cooking the Casbah with moms. Some of the audience members are really mothers of people that I work with. Joshua and his mother Patricia. Joshua is a big help here in the kitchen at the Casbah. He's often here with me in the evening. And Karen is Kane's mom. And Kane, you've seen him. The guy is sometimes in the background. That's Kane. He also invited his mother. And we're blessed and lucky to have you with us. Mothers and grandmothers in the audience. This meal is a representation of what my mother's food meant to me. And I'm going to make one of those dishes. So mom, makluba. Makluba is my favorite dish. It translates in Arabic to upside down. Because we cook things in here, then we serve them this way. That's empty, right? <laughs> For those of you who are wondering what, what had went on. Uh, makluba is it, it, it's, a, it's a rice dish, simply. It depends on what you put in it. It could have lamb, it could have chicken, it could be vegetarian. Eggplant, uh, cauliflower, or, or beef okay. or, for meat, you name your meat. But the main thing is to get the flavor out of the meat, embed it in the, in the fruit or vegetable, add the rice, add broth, and let it all cook together in one happy little family. So without any delay, I have some uh, olive oil here. You could use your favorite shortening. I wanna sweat the onions. And let me know if I do anything off the beaten path. She'll keep me. <laughs> We have often discussed variations on things, and mom always says, my mother made it this way, but your father's mother made it the other way. So that's the distinction between the recipes that had come to me. And I add the, uh, a little bit of pepper. And the chicken here, someone asked earlier what kind of chicken. This is skinless thigh. There's a little bit of fat in that. I want that fat to melt as part of our meal and give me some of the flavor that will flavor the eggplants that are somewhat bland. But at least I skinned and uh, deboned the thigh. Some people use it with whole, with bone, bone in. You'll have an adventure in every bite. <laughs> you never know what you're going to chomp on. on. Um, now, the trick here is to, as the fat from the chicken melts from the heat, I set it aside and I add the eggplants. They act as a sponge, but before they got to this spongy shape, they had a little bit of water in there. So what I wanted to do is sprinkle them with salt and put them on this rag. So as they sweat the moisture from the salt, it's wicked out by the salt. Then I dab it just like that. A little dry, you can see it glisten here and that, see that? That's eggplant working out really hard. <laughs> and I simply stack them like this. When everything is nice and soft in about 15 to 20 minutes of this, you wanna cook this a little longer. For the sake of our demonstration today, I'm simply, I'm gonna keep it nice and simple, like that. Uh, the rice, your favorite kind of rice, I use a mixture of jasmine and basmati, which is, happens to be a family secret here. <laughs> I add the rice right on it. Now I'm going to add the water. What happens since the eggplants were not completely um, moist with the juice that came out of the chicken because we ran this a little fast, they might start floating, which is not a problem. If they float, push them down. Push them down. Put the rice up. Yeah. And of course, the appropriate amount of salt for the rice because that rice is going to soak up this liquid. If you have chicken broth, that's a little bit um, denser flavor. But I make my own broth this method. And the right amount of salt. I want to make sure that the, sh the, uh, the rice is submerged in water. Use the instructions of that particular rice that you're making. And once this comes to a boil, you put a lid on it. This was my favorite part. 
waiting for this lid to come off. Right? It was the revelation. This is the dish. After about a few hours, oh, more like 45 minutes. And one of my favorite parts about this is that we want to invert it. Now, this is the lottery. We could and could not finish this transaction. I've done this before. I'm a trained professional. <laughs> as long as the rice comes out, then we'll just hold your clapping. <laughs> and then uh, you knock on it a few times. Do you think it's going to come out? Who's got money on the table? <laughs> Well, some parts came out, some didn't, but we're going to eat it all anyway. Now, in this case, the eggplants went to the bottom. We'll do some uh, repairs here. It smells good. And what I'm going to do for my guests here, and we're lucky to have every mother we know here in, this, in the building. <laughs> I'm going to do a serving of this with some of the eggplants and some of the chicken, if I can find it. Of course, something moist. And I brought some yogurt for that purpose. And this is homemade yogurt. For recipes for homemade yogurt and much more, go to www.cookinthecasbah.com and I'll post some of mom's recipes on there. And that's makluba with eggplants and chicken. We're gonna take a little break and still cooking with mom on Cooking the Casbah. <laughs> 